Yeah. Now we are. Hey, Eddie. Yes. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. Hey, 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 Eddie. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. What? A, what? What are you eating there, Eddie? Hmm. It's hot Cheetos. You're eating hot Cheetos. How come? What's the occasion? Well, because we're reviewing Flamin' Hot. Also, can I tell you a fun fact before we begin the this official review? And I hope it's this, and, and then you do yeah. the, the the intro. I, I I believe it's the same fun fact that I've been hearing every time that I hear anything about this movie. Oh uh, no, it's, no, it's no, not, no, it's not that. Okay, we can we can yeah. talk about that though. Oh, uh, definitely, um, yeah. So apparently, um, you know how we call them hot Cheetos? Yeah. Apparently, that's a South Texas Mexico thing because everywhere else, apparently, they actually call them flaming hot Cheetos for well, some yeah, reason. People in this area just call them hot Cheetos. <clears throat> yeah. Like, okay. So, folks, Cheetos. if you don't know, um, I I live in Edinburgh, Texas. Chema lives in Mexico. I don't know if you want me to actually say what city. I mean, you already exposed yourself. Why not expose me? You know, I don't. I don't know what I'm on today. You got it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's where we live. We live in South Texas. We live near and in the motherland, respectively. So for some reason, the, only these areas call them hot Cheetos, where apparently if you go any further north of Kingsville in Texas, they call them flaming Hot. And like if you call them hot Cheetos, you expose yourself as, oh, you're a South Texan. All right, mm -hmm. dude. I mean, it's like the it's like the best part of Texas, but okay, you know. Yeah. But who's counting? You know. True. Oh, uh, one other fun fact: you can't find yeah. hot Cheetos in Washington. Why are they banned? No, no, no. Uh, Nikki's brother Robert says that there's only one Seven Eleven that sells them in the area, and it takes it's, it's like a long ass walk to get there because all the other stores don't sell hot Cheetos in DC. Jesus. So Jesus. there's that. Are you telling me that if? If sitting U.S. President Joe Biden just wants, just if it's feeling snacky, <laughs> it's just sitting in the Oval Office and just feels <laughs> snacky. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe watches this movie and thinks, I got to get me a, a bag of those. He has to, like, get them exported or imported. Pretty fucking much. Try it. Yeah, pretty you much. Try it. All right. Jesus. Do Unless you he hear can find that one corner store. Do you want to hear another fun fact? Yes, please. I am not a fan of hot Cheetos. That's okay. I didn't start liking hot Cheetos till a couple years ago, so that's okay. Do you like spicy okay, chips maybe. in general, though? Do you like jalapeno chips? I, uh, I I like jalapeno chips. I like spicy. Uh, I, I like uh, like the spicy dip. That's mm -hmm. fine. But like that specific blend of spice of it's like that sweet spicy that I don't love. Same reason why I don't like uh, uh, a barbecue sauce. You know, um, that's fair. Fair. I don't know. It's just a me thing, but uh, I don't know. It's like chamoy. Like I, I don't like chamoy either, and I don't know if this is like a, I don't know if this is where we lose all the Mexicans, but <laughs> it's a. <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be interesting to have this perspective between the two of us in this in this movie. So, um, oh my god, I have stories to tell. Okay. Remind me of my family when we're talking about how the impact of hot Cheetos on Latino culture. But it's gonna uh, be hard to not. It's gonna be uh, hard to not bring it up. <laughs> no, but there's interesting things. But uh, before we get there, Chema, hit the intro. Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Chema. I'm Eddie. And reviewing Flaming Hot, and this is the rollback. Flaming Hot, the flavor you know, the story you don't. The inspiring true story of Richard Montañez, the Frito Lay janitor who channeled his Mexican American heritage and upbringing the an, an upbringing to turn the iconic Flaming Hot Cheetos into a snack that disrupted the food industry and became a global pop culture phenomenon. So we have Flaming Hot directed by, I don't know if you know this, Eva Longoria. Yeah, I thought that was a weird one. Goat for her. I mean, well done. Is um, it though? 
No, I'm just kidding. I mean, it is. I mean, is. here's the thing. Here's the thing. The movie is small. It's a small movie. It's a it's a small biopic. It's kind of in the vein of this uh, this weird uh, biopics that we've been getting that are not about a person but about a product. So we just had BlackBerry. We just had Air, and now we have uh, Flaming Hot. A weird trend that I did not see coming that we we're gonna get this year. But I'm enjoying them. I'm enjoying all of them really. Um, so this one stars Jesse Garcia, Annie Gonzalez, Dennis Haysbert, Matt Walsh, Tony Shalhoub, and a few other uh, characters that round up the cast. This was dropped straight into our, uh, uh, from your end, it was Hulu. From my end, it was both uh, Star and Disney+. Plus. We, we got them both. And, uh, and this is a story about the creation of the Flaming Hot Cheeto. I have several uh, uh, taglines that I wanted to use. Uh, uh, how about I read I read them off and you tell me which one's your favorite one? Deal. All right. Based on a cheesy true story. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> this is Richard Montanez, a real blue chipper. <laughs> Richard Montanez was never afraid to ruffle a few feathers. I like that one. All right. Meet the one man who put all his chips on the table. Uh, All right, I said my favorite for last year already. Okay. This summer, prepare to get laid. <laughs> you know what? There you go. You won. That one was a win. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Good for you. Like, like I said, a small story. It's like an hour and 30. It's not that long. And uh, great streaming watch. This is a movie that was made for the streaming era. It feels like a streaming movie. It's smaller. Um, it's good out there to say it's good it's not great it's not fantastic it's not big it's not wow it's not gonna win or get nominated for any awards but as a small you know experiment with good intentions i i i found myself enjoying uh a good chunk of it there are some parts of it that i did have problems with but we can get into that when we get into uh, specifics what was your overall take of the movie Cards on the table? Cards on the table. I'll, I'll explain more as we go, but uh, if you want like a quick uh, quick thing, this might be in my top 10 of the year. Actually, Jesus I, Christ. I can almost guarantee you it will be. Jesus Christ. Um, All right. For the, for the... I hate, I hate that I'm going to say this. Because of the family aspect of it, it'll probably yeah. be in my top 10 of the year. I knew it was going to get you from that angle just immediately. <laughs> like, there's so much relatability in this. And we can talk about it as we go. But, like, just straight up because of the family aspect of it and how relatable it is, this film genuinely got me. Like, I even said, like, this movie might only be good. I, I, I said in a video review that I did for this, this movie might only be good, but because of the personal aspects... Like it, it's great to me. Yeah, because of that, it's not, um, it's it's not gonna hit for everyone the same way. And, oh God, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, and like, uh, like I said, I don't want to like say that it, it it's. I said it before. It's not an awards sweeper movie. Like I said, it's a fairly small production, and you can feel you can feel like the movie's pretty small. It takes place in like just either his house or in the factory. It's, or it's always one of the two. Yeah, and. Uh, and like the cast is mostly people that are either up and coming or that we haven't seen a lot. I think the most famous person here is Tony Shalop, who uh, I know because I grew up watching Spy Kids like like a ton. Really, um, I know him as yeah. Mr. Monk. <laughs> oh, that's right, he's Monk too. Yeah, uh, no, I don't. I, I I never watched Monk. I was more of a I was more of a psych guy. Oh, um, that's fair. We're gonna yeah. psych you out in the end. Yeah, I mean, I, I figured everyone is like one of the two. I figured. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I was, I was more of a psych guy. Yeah. Well, actually, you know who I thought was the most famous person in this? So I saw Tony Shalou. Um, the Allstate guy. Allstate guy was in this? Yeah. He, he was. was he? He, uh, the, the, the new head of the factory, the one that took uh, Ricard, Richard under his wing. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I've seen him in stuff before. I, I, I forgot his name. Remember, that's all to say, Stan. Are you in good hands? Yeah, uh, uh, ten, Dennis Haysbert. Yeah, Dennis Haysbert. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff, but 
I guess he's more of a character actor. The other person that I knew very well was like the boss of the factory, uh, Matt Walsh. He's in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, he's in like a lot of comedies. Oh he's, God, he's... I hated him. <laughs> I mean, he had, he had his moments. He, he had a nice little moment at the end where he's like, "I got you, I got you." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I almost didn't recognize him without without the mustache. Um, all right, so we can talk story or we can talk emotional beats. Um, because I feel like it's a very straightforward story. It's like the classic racks to riches a story. And, you know, when we get to specifics and like the big, I don't know if it's a problem, but like the big, I don't know, talking points slash controversy behind this movie. Like the You want to just thing. knock out the controversy first? All right. Let's, let's, yeah, you know what? Let, we're, we're going to bring it up throughout the whole thing. So, uh, from what I understand, this whole story is like completely made up. <laughs> Uh, Richard Montañez is a real person. He did work at Frito-Lay, but Frito-Lay has made several statements where they just keep saying, I don't know why this guy's saying this story. It's not true. We do appreciate his contributions to Frito-Lay, but it's no, like by the time he started working here, we were already working on spicy stuff. And while it's true, he was like the director of like regional or cultural or, or I, I, I forgot the right title. Uh, he left PepsiCo like in 2019 because of strong allegations of the story that he kept saying that he was getting investigated after the book that he released that, that this movie is based on. So I don't know. I wasn't there in the room where it happened. Does it make for a good story? Yes, but it does make some scenes in the movie kind of hard to believe. And um yeah, and that's the part where it's hard. Because like if you told me if this this movie was like a fictional story about a man growing from like Rex to Riches, making up a fictional uh uh piece of snack, uh I would have eaten this right up. Um, but that sours the experience a little bit. You know, in, in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, okay, so from the limited research I've done, I'll be very clear, I've done internet research. I've not I've not I'm, interviewed I'm, anyone. I'm shocked because you're usually the more, the more, <laughs> the more informed. Uh, no, so I did. I I'm saying I've done limited research on this. I haven't yeah. interviewed. I fucking never interviewed Ricardo directly. From what I understand, the story goes is that Flamin they were Fido Lay was working on something already. They portray that in the film. They they acknowledge it. Like no, they were working on something. He just beat them to the punch and made it better. As yeah. I understand it he did come up with it he came up with the idea of it and did develop it um and presented it they just gave it their own spin and something that was more economically friendly for them to create he straight up says like it wasn't just me i had a lot of help but this it's disputed as far as oh he had nothing to do with it because there was a scientist that said we were already developing something he was nowhere near us that's true because they yeah. were developing spicy stuff in a different part of the country. So it's disputed. Yeah. The disputed part is disputed itself. Um, But yeah. But see, here's the thing. I find it hard to believe that Frito-Lay, if it's true that it's a lie, why would they allow this film to be made? They could have stopped it because it's less than 75 years in. They could have killed the film. I don't know how much involvement they can do. Like, reminder, like, remember when they made the social network and then Zuckerberg came out and said, like, yeah, that was all bullshit. Um, they didn't stop the movie because it's like, well, what can we do? Like, it's literally like, like, we're going to, like, sometimes not engaging is better mm -hmm. because either, because they might end up giving, like, more promotion to the movie and they don't want that. But like this movie came out with, like, relatively low fanfare. Like, I, like, I started seeing posters around town for the movie but mm -hmm. that was like uh like five days before the movie came out maybe yeah and i had heard about this movie before because i had seen it like it premiered in like some festivals and i saw some people cover it but other than that i saw very minimal like i'm, I'm sure i i thought i was gonna have to like wait a while before i could see it and then it was just dropped into like disney plus and shit so um now here's the thing social network it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I agree that it's all a lie. <laughs> so does that, does this being a lie stop me from enjoying this? Movie? Of course not. Uh, 
This movie is not about a guy creating the hot Cheeto. This movie is about a strong man that wants to fulfill his potential. And he was able to do that because he was surrounded by people who loved him and believed in him. And he ended up believing in himself. And that can be about anything, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, my, my favorite part in the whole thing is not even about hot Cheetos. My favorite part in the movie is where he's consoling his son after he's been bullied. And oh, that different. scene. Oh. Yeah, that's the best scene in the movie because like, the, the, the son is like, why do we have to be like this? Why do we have to be? Can we just like pretend to be white? Can we pretend to be like uh, uh, like like uh, people from the United States? Like, can, can we not be like this? And his dad, and like, and like Jesse Garcia, and like the most like sincere voice and eyes, and like his whole body is like locked in into his son, and he tells him like, "Being Mexican is our superpower. Like, it's not bad." And that's a message that you you're you're crying right now. Like, you got crying. to Fuck you, you, you got <laughs> to you right now because it's true, and I, and it got me while, while while I was watching it, and. uh I don't know the, the the whole situation with like the parents. Kind of, remember, remember we watched that movie Minari. Like, remember, remember that movie? Um, yeah, yeah. Remember when when the mom is telling like uh, Stephen Yeun, like, just drop it. Like, you tried, it failed. Like, let's just move on. We, we have stuff like we need to do. And he goes like, I can't, I can't stop. Like, I have to keep trying. And he goes, she goes, why? And she and he goes, I cannot see my kids see me fail again. You know, like it's like it's about pride at some point. Yeah, and I feel like this. And I feel like this movie. Yeah, you're crying again. Like you, I'm not crying. There are no tears. Okay, I it's just hot right now. Uh -huh. Is it because you ate those Cheetos and you're sweating? Like, is it? Is it it's hot in here. Also, it is. Uh, it's hot in here. Matt, or, 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 by the way, like by the way, let's 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 date the episode immediately. We're going through a massive heat wave, like here, and I know over there as well. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's bad. Uh, uh, to give you an global idea, warming is a myth, guys. Yeah, uh, but the best the, the best part is that you know at least it's going to be the coldest summer for the rest of our lives. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to the movie. Um, yeah, to me, like those scenes really stand out, and like uh, they are the thing that make the movie work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do you want to hit the family and the story just right from the get go? Because I got a few. Yeah. Yeah, so, go, go, go right ahead. Yeah. So the movie opens up in Southern California, uh, where Richard grew up as the child of migrant workers who he was himself a migrant worker. Um, which that hits close to home because Fernie's not here, but I'll say it for him. His mother and my mother were both migrant workers. My mom worked the fields in, in Bakersfield. Like, believe it or not, she actually did pick fruit. Yeah. Um, so that hit close and a lot of aspects of that are accurate, even, if, even according to my mom about growing up, how you have so many kids, how, you know, there's not enough to go around necessarily. So they buy the cheapest thing and spread it as thin as they possibly can. So when he says, oh, his lunch every day was a bean, was a bean burrito. Yeah, no, man, that's pretty fucking accurate. Cause that's the cheapest thing you can buy. Um, beans and and tortillas the the stereotype is true to some degree like because that's what we have um and working hard and growing up and it's it's an accurate stereotype you know the hard-working mexican i will say this and i say this proudly it is a real stereotype we are hard working we will bust our ass harder than anyone else because that's just the way we were raised that's the way my parents raised us um, I talk about my mom being an immigrant who worked uh, the fields in California. My dad, uh, some of y'all will get this reference. Some of you will not. He's so chicles when he was a little kid in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he saved up money to buy a shoe shine box so he could make more money shining shoes. Um, one of the odd jobs he had was he was a, he was a fetcher for duck hunters, meaning when they would shoot the duck and it would fall, he would run and grab the duck. Uh, he also, yeah, he also was a garbage truck driver when he was 12 years old. That, those are my parents. Those are the people that raised me. So to see 
a story that's so similar to theirs uh, as they come up having to work hard, hustle, bust your ass. Like, dude, this movie got me a lot of times seeing that. I felt like I could see my parents in his struggle. Because also you see uh, Richard and Judy and how they have each other's back. It's it's the epitome of it's you and me against the world. And I mean that, again, in the best way possible. But the only people that are going to help us are us. So we need to figure it out. We need to hustle. We need to try. I remember my dad working on... Here's another story. I'm sorry if I'm getting too personal. Like, tell me to stop. I feel like it's the point of the show, so I might as well. Um, my dad yeah. it has this story, and he'll he'll tell it to you like today if you ask him. <laughs> so, when him and my mom first got together, uh, after they had gotten married, and they had their house, her the engine in her car broke down. It was a Honda or something. I don't remember, uh, but. They didn't have money to take it to a mechanic. The problem was the engine, but they didn't have the money to go to a mechanic. So what they ended up doing was my dad, they split the car, the one working car for about two weeks while my dad bought a book and took the engine apart himself. They were so broke that my dad had to unbuild, had to disassemble and rebuild an entire fucking car engine, which folks, I don't know if you're aware of that, that is something a lot of mechanics can't fucking do is disassemble and reassemble an engine. And he did because that's what you had to fucking do. You didn't have a plan B. You didn't have a choice. Figure it out. Um, so it's just a lot of that young, hardworking, busting your ass aspect is just fucking phenomenal. And I loved it. I loved every part of that. Um yeah. Yeah. So did you see your, so I'm sorry, I keep mentioning my family. Did you see a lot of your family in this film when it came to like the culture, you know, where they lived, how they grew up and everything? Did you? Well, yes and no. Uh, specifically because, well, my parents are not immigrants. Like they have lived, they were born in Mexico. They grew up in Mexico. They still live in Mexico. Like they, to them going to the U S is like, Oh, shopping trip. And like, they, they, go and they come back. <laughs> Yeah, they're like they go and it's like oh hot nuts, and then they just they, they just come back, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's not it's never been like in the cards for them like to like go. Uh, so like they're self made and they're here. Um, but of course, I I related to the struggle. Like it's not it's not just a Mexican American thing. Like it is it's not just a, a Chicano thing. Like it is a it is very much a Mexican thing. Like I could relate a lot to like the things that they would say. There's a scene where like uh, Richard's parents are there in like their house and like they're trying to eat and like he has a very complex and complicated relationship with his dad, and uh, his dad is very like like completely diminishes everything that he does. Like uh, he didn't have a job, he found a job, and yet the dad still is like is, is like you're gonna you're gonna go nowhere with that job. It's like motherfucker, he got a job <laughs> like an honest job. Like it's a start. <laughs> Give him some leeway, you know. Yeah, uh, but his his dad is just complete a complete asshole. And then like the mom <laughs> does like the most grandma shit I've ever seen, which is like she pulls out a big candle. It's like you gotta pray to this thing. And it's like <laughs> oh god, like I was watching that like Jesus Christ, like like no, oh my God, like call me out on the timeline. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So some things like that, yeah, de definitely. Struggles and even the scenes with like the kids, with, like the two kids who are just like running around everywhere and you know trying to grow up in this strange world. We see very little of the kids, but when they're there, they're there, and they they really do need to like uh, they do count. They are they are present in like the most important scenes. But even the, that scene, that scene that I mentioned of the, of the son, like why do I have to be so different? Like why I didn't have that because I grew up in Mexico. So like if you were a weird Mexican, it's like. Big big whoop, we all are. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I was living in the US, I did it, even in a place that was so full of like a lot of Mexicans, like there were there were moments where I'm like, oh Jesus, I'm like the odd one out. Even if even if I could pass as like a as like as like a as like, a, as like, a, like, like yeah, it it I definitely related. Uh my parents have not seen it since the movie. Um I don't know how they feel about it. Maybe after they see it, I can I can add some 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 notes or something. Can you hear me? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, it's just that your your screen froze for a second. No, no, uh, I, I can't. I, okay, you've been good the whole time. Yeah. Um, um, 
Yeah, no, no. There's uh, there's definitely something there because like I remember my parents told me like once it's like it's like they told me like son when you were born we didn't have money to buy socks. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember hearing that and being, being like, being like, then why did you have? To? <laughs> like, like, that's like, it's, that's like, so, that, that's so financially irresponsible. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, but but like, but like, like I like socks. Yeah. I really like socks. Like, if you, if you, if you told me you can either have a kid or have socks, I would have been like, I'll take the socks, man. Like, if I have I to choose, like I probably shouldn't. <laughs> I feel like it's a win-win, man. I mean, <laughs> no, but like it's like it's it's, it's like scenes like that, and like, and like, but I understand different generation. You know, they were they were put uh, they, they were put to, to to do you know their stuff. We luckily are going to have a wider range of options, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah. So of course, I saw a little bit of my parents there. Of course, I saw like what the dad was like, just sitting there frustrated and trying to come up with something or trying to get to pick something off the ground like it it of course it was there and like the cathartic scenes like when he's talking to the son or when he finally snaps back to the dad and uh I love uh, you, you, what you mentioned like I love the relationship between uh Richard and, and and Judy like I love how they grew up together and then they they she she tells him like this wonderful th- like there's a moment where like he tells his dad he stands up to him and, and goes like the problem with everything that you say is that it, that's the voice that I hear in my head. It's your voice just telling me that I can't do it. And I like how Judy's response is like, okay, we're going to get his voice out of you. We're going to get my voice into you. And it's like, yeah, back to back, double murder champions. Like that's relationship goals right there, man. Like, yeah, like they both like, like they both struggle. They both hustle and they both got the reward at the end. Like they, it is the American dream, like it is that that story that we all that we all chase in a weird way. Um, now, there are some parts in the movie more, like I said, the emotional parts, the the character parts, those are all fine and good. I I I, I couldn't find flaws in that because, um, like, I know some people are gonna watch the movie and be like, "The dad is so mean." And like, have you met? a mexican disappointed father dude. that like was a drunk and is now found jesus like those I, are the worst I can, I can introduce you to 30 in like my zip code like it's dude that yeah. i feel like is it just me or is that a stereotype it is a stereotype and it's, but a, it's true a true one, one. <laughs> yeah. oh man it's unfortunately a, a true one one of those yeah. uh i feel like yeah. that's not my dad my dad loved me but Oh, yeah. that is a true stereotype of the... By the way, yeah, every time... Uh, I have to mention every time you bring up your dad, that is a heck of a dancer. Like, <laughs> I, I, like I don't know what... I, I, like, you, you mentioned your dad, I just I, I just think of him on the dance floor. Like, that's the first image that immediately pops into my head. I, I, I barely remember what he looks like physically. I just remember <laughs> his moves, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, you know what? If we're yeah. talking about family, I'm going to mention just real quick. Fun fact, folks. <laughs> Both my parents, amazing dancers. Actually, won like like trophies. Like my parents. Both sisters have, I think, seven national dancing championships between them. Jesus when God. it comes to like teen dancing, like like with the tiaras at yeah. Nicky Rowe and McCallum. Me, yeah. two left feet. <laughs> I'm, like, to go somewhere. I'm like, I'm like, why, why the fuck didn't you all teach me to dance? And they were like, you just <laughs> didn't have any rhythm. <laughs> Uh, it happens but, but yeah so fucking this film so he so richard i want to i want to mention when he's at the factory he's trying to learn how to do things he's naturally curious and yeah. he he goes in early and stays late to learn more about the machines to try and do something he doesn't have a degree but he takes on hand on experience that is again something that i think is relevant and something that i'm proud of the fact that like hey if i don't know something I'm going to try to figure it out. I might not be the most educated, but I'm fucking resourceful. I'm going to figure it, I'm going to learn. Yeah. Um, there is no YouTube in this, in this point. There's only, you know, Richard and the goal to fucking learn. Um, and he's on a good note. And then, and then comes the Satan. Then comes Ronald Reagan and the Reagan administration. <laughs> That was uh remember that that meme that I showed you of like me and my best friend like walking out of Cracker Barrel after calling one a Reagan a pussy and it's like <laughs> these two guys with like guns outside of a saloon. Yeah. Oh from from Boondock yeah. Saints. Yeah, uh, no, it's from uh it's with Cowboy Bebop, but yeah. 
Oh, oh man. God. Yeah, like, fuck Ronald man, Reagan. Fuck Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Just to be clear, man. Fuck Ronald Reagan. But so yeah. Ronald Reagan in his infinite wisdom decides to fuck over all the, you know, lower and middle class people. But but thank God for the tax cuts for the rich, right? Anyway. Yeah. Um, he fucks him so bad that Frito Lay starts laying off workers left, right, left, right, left, right. And they're getting hammered to a point of desperation where there's only two factories left open in their area uh, and they might get closed down. Uh, Tony Shalou makes a plea to the to the workers to work hard, be innovative, think like a CEO. And that resonates the way, with Richard. But by the way, Tony Shalou plays Roger Enrico, who's the CEO of Frito Lake. So I think we didn't mention it. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. He's the CEO. Oh, is it just Frito Lake or is it PepsiCo as a whole? You know what? Yeah, you're right. You might, it might be PepsiCo, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that kind of gives Richard the slight kick in the ass to try and figure something out. Uh, he picks up his kids from school after that incident that you mentioned with the son saying, why do we have to be so Mexican? And Richard saying, that's our superpowers. is you know, that. Um, yeah. Their kids are eating elote, which folks, if you've ever had elotes, uh they call it for some reason Mexican street corn instead of calling it elotes. It's called elotes. You're gonna fucking eat it. Address it properly. Anyway, you know what? You know what? I'll give I'll give uh, I'll give gringos a chance because even inside of Mexico, we don't fucking agree on what to call them. What we, we call them elotes here? What the fuck do y'all call them in Mexico? Yeah, so it depends in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like it depends. It depends. It depends where in Mexico you are. If you're in the north, it's an elote. If you're in the if you're in the center, uh, they call it uh, they call it something else. If you're in the south, you call it something else. They call it a trole in some places. They call it a uh, a what's it called? Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, well, give me a second. Can you hear me? Yeah. There it is. I don't know why my microphone kind of dis- uh, disconnected. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, in the center, they, they call it an esquite. So, yeah. So, like I said, like it depends where you are. There's a famous Mexican poet who once said, inside of Mexico, there's a town of Mexico. So, like like I said, I'll give you a chance. If you call it something different, it's like, fine. We don't even fucking agree on what to call it. So, yeah. <laughs> fine, fine. Yeah. But, folks, in case yeah. you want to know the right answer, it, it is it is a lot there. It is an elote, yeah. From where I'm at, also, yeah. And we're back. All right, we're back. Um, um yeah. <clears throat> let's see. Where were we going with this? Uh, so the kids, the kids are eating elote, and then he he nails the uh, spicy like the idea. Yeah. Oh, that was another thing. Okay, so do you like spice? You said you don't really love spicy food, right? Oh, but I love elote. Like it's it's uh, like, <laughs> like I like I like spicy food. I just don't like that kind of spicy food. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, yeah. folks, there's <clears throat> different levels of spicy. Yeah, and like to me, hot Cheetos is not like spicy, spicy. It's like sweet, spicy. It, I don't know uh, what happened to my voice. Jesus, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Jesus, I don't know what happened to my voice there. There's um, different levels of spice. Yeah. Uh, so we have there, we, we, we go there and then, yeah, the kids are eating a lot. And like the, the youngest one who bless this kid's heart, he's trying, uh, <laughs> as so, an actor, I mean, I'm sure, you know, he will grow, he will become a, a, a better performer with time. Um, oh, come uh, on, it's I, a kid. I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't bust his chops. You, you can't, uh, you can't uh, shit on a kid that bad, man. Come on. I'm not going to, that's why I'm not going to just saying. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna become a, a great actor one day. Um, <laughs> Jesus, okay, I mean, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, he starts. Uh, he's eating the corn, and he's like, he gets spicy, and then his dad tells him like, like, it's good spicy or like bad spicy. And he's like, and he she he like stops and goes like, no, good spicy. And then it hits him like it's right there. The answer is right in front of me. Yeah, it's, it's like the it's like the it's like the ending of Mad Men, except not really what's called it's it's funny because it that is the initial spark of the idea and it's such an accurate thing for like hispanic kids mexican it, well, okay what phrase am i using is am i using mexican or hispanic what's are both fine to use i i don't know the, the yes right and verbiage. no 
Yes and no. So for this one specifically, it will be Mexican. It will be Latino. Mm -hmm. uh, Hispanics will include everyone who speaks Spanish. That will include the people in Spain who speak Spanish. And those are not Latinos. They are Europeans. Mm -hmm. People think that they are that they are not Latinos. They're Europeans. They are the white men. Just you know, just with just speaking a different language. Um, so yeah, so yeah, yeah. So okay. uh, Latino Mexican is, is is good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, eating spicy things is a Mexican way of life. When from the time you're a child, I'll be honest, I was one of the weird ones. I'm a late bloomer. I didn't start liking spicy things till I met Nikki. But I can tell you a few stories about my family growing up. Uh, my sisters ate nothing but hot Cheetos, and what else? It was hot Cheetos. Oh, God, there was another spicy snack I was going to mention. The oh, chicharrones. Love yeah. chicharrones growing up. Uh, so not so fun fact. My sister Evelyn, which Evelyn, if you're listening to this, you're a teacher. Like you're better than this. But my sister... <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, my sister Evelyn, uh, ate so much hot Cheetos, ate so much spicy stuff that it caused her to have ulcers when she was 19. Do you understand that, like, that's something for old people? Do you know that how much spicy food you have to eat for that to happen to you? But it did. <laughs> and you know what? She's still to this fucking day. Like, <laughs> on a Friday, Evelyn, if you want me to cut this, just tell me and I'll cut it. She will eat <laughs> an entire bag of hot Funyuns or hot Cheetos on a Friday night. Because she knows it's going to, like hurt the next day on Saturday, like her whole body's going to be in pain, but she's always like, worth it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Emily, same thing, loves spicy food. She always had, she always has a bag of hot Cheetos at the house without fail. Nikki and my dad, they have a bond over eating the, the spiciest chile that even my sisters can't handle. My dad will buy it and he'll just split it between himself and Nikki. And we always take it home with us. So Nikki can eat it because I can't handle it. Like spicy food is a way of life. I agree. So, yeah. so for him to have the common sense, because his idea wasn't just to make something spicy. It was to make something that kind of encapsulated his culture, which, yeah, yeah, no, it, he did a good job. Yeah. And, uh, and we see, I love how they go through like this testing stage of like, they go through different rubs and different kind of spices and they just keep buying like <laughs> so many different like chilies to see, see like one of these is bound to hit, one of these is bound to work. I love how he recruits everyone at the at the factory to like steal some of the funnions and like the the, the 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 Cheetos and everything until to see to see which one sticks. I love how he takes like the science of the uh, of the uh of the machine in order to make the powder stick. Like he does that with a bag at his house. Like he just fucking engineered everything to like make them at his house, and then he brings them in to like to to, to, to like try them and 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 everything. And it's it's a great like trial and error scene. Like I can't believe so much so many things happen in this movie, and it's just like like an hour and thirty, maybe an hour and forty. Like it's it's so well paced. It's crazy because there's so much going into this. You would think at the beginning of the movie he'd already be the janitor, but no. Even becoming a janitor is a challenge because he doesn't he doesn't have his GED, he doesn't have his high school diploma, which again, that's a common thing, believe it or not, especially back then most most uh Hispanics weren't able to go to college. Um my mom takes great pride in being I think she might be the only one in her family uh with the degree that that's not to downplay you know my other aunts and uncles it's just my mom was hell bent on going to school and my dad's proud that he was able to help her go to school she graduated when i was like four years old i'm in the picture of her graduation um i think i was trying to also to like get a piece of her cake because i remember <laughs> she had to hold my hand because i was like chocolate <laughs> but um <laughs> But yeah, it's even he even struggles to get a fucking job as a janitor. Like that's how low it is. And then even then, like people like crack jokes at him as far as like, oh, you're just meant to be the janitor. That's it. Or I can't have someone like you messing up what I built. Like like stuff like that. Like just little digs here and there. And you know what they mean. There are a few scenes in this film that get 
necessarily ugly. And I say necessarily because it, they are exposing something that really is or was more common back then, I suppose. Um, like racial things where like when the mom is hustling to sell tortillas and the kid yeah. accidentally gets some gum on a uh, on a on a car. car, you know, the guy says, you know, these I'm not going to say what he said, but, you know, these W word uh, popping kids out like crazy like that is a fucking insult, man. Yeah, that that's an ugly, ugly insult to and to say it to a child like, uh, man, there's so many parts like that. Yeah, well, what, what, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no, no. I was just agreeing. Yeah. Like, uh, um, and that's the same kid that actually even says when he's older, uh, why do we have to be so Hispanic? Why do we have to be so... I'm sorry, not Hispanic. Why do we have to be so Mexican? Yeah. Um, which, like, you should be proud of it, man. Um, but anyway, that said, uh, he develops Hot Cheetos and... Uh, or Flamin' Hot Cheetos. But, and he's trying to, to, to get uh, a meeting with the CEO... You can't follow chain of command. Like they all get angry. You always follow chain of command. No, because when you do that, you either get shut down or someone else steals the credit. Yeah. Uh, so he he does what I think most people would do. He hijacks the phone number and calls the CEO directly and pitches him the idea and sends him uh, a box full of hot Cheetos to try. You know what? Here's the thing. You say uh, uh, he does what anyone would do. That was a ballsy thing to do. He's going to lose his job think, anyway. I don't think anyone would have done that, but um, he did it at like the right, the right point at the, at the at the right time. And here's where I think the movie starts not lose me, but it, it I, I do start to be like, oh come on, it could not have been that easy. Like he just calls the CEO, introduces himself, and is like, hey, can I just pitch this to you? And he just goes, sure. Like. Like, I mean, it works because Tony Shalove is like such like a looks like such a nice guy. Like it mm -hmm. works because of that. And it also works because he makes the connection of like, well, I saw your video and like and like uh yeah. And even like uh Matt Walsh he even says, like, I have to play this stupid video. I don't want to, but like it, I'm forced to do it. It's like watch, don't watch, I don't care. And it's like I've worked at an office, I've worked in a factory, I've worked in different places. I know what those videos are like. Like I know what like a per like a, per a person that like is at the top and pretends to care for us and just like shows this is what you can be one day. It's like and, and we all don't care, but this guy believes it, and because he believes it, he manages to make it work. Like he quotes the video to him and he goes, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Like he could have sent him like like something bad but no he just accepted it and i love i love the scene where he gets the boxes and he like opens the bag and like he starts eating it and he's he's getting <laughs> like spicy but then he just keeps eating it and then there's like a there's a Water. silhouette of yeah there's a silhouette of him calling on him on the phone and he has like the cheeto dust on his fingers like it's like it's like like visually one of the best scenes in the movie just like a good way to show how how uh, overbearing that that thing is, and the mark that it was gonna be, because that those cheetah fingers are like, uh, especially in the valley, they're like super. They're all, they're almost like a, they're almost part of like the valley cosplay, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fucking true. Um, man, I was gonna say I I agree with you, man. I think the only reason he got through it in was because he said, "Hey, I watched your video. You watched my video." And that's Nobody kind of his in. My video. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like that was his in. It, it was it was a smart play. It was a smart call. Um and you know what you just made me uh, think about something. The voiceovers that happen in this film, typically voiceovers are considered a lazy way of writing, right? Like, oh, it's supposed yeah. to show, not tell. Uh, but then I think of Wolf of Wall Street, and I'm like, wait a second. They use uh voiceovers in a productive way, in a way to get us into the mind of the of our protagonist, of our of our hero. And I'm like, no, I think it serves the same aspect. This Flamin' Hot is the Wolf of Wall Street of, of Mexican people, except for the fact that, you know, our guy didn't end up in jail. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so here's the thing, and I'm so glad you pointed this out. This is my only gripe with the movie. This is my only problem with the movie. And unfortunately, it's kind of hard to look away when it's happening. So my biggest grab with the movie is when he's recreating these scenes of like the CEOs or people talking 
and he just does this voiceover, uh, but talking as like Chicanos would talk. Yeah, and then he's like, and then he's like, oh wait, fine, let me go back, let me just read it as, as, as it should, and then he just plays the whole scene again. It's not a bad scene. The problem is that I've seen that joke in Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. And like it's the same fucking joke. I was about to say, you know, they stole that from Ant Man. Yeah, like it's the same joke. Like if I was Edgar Wright, I would be kicking the air right now. Because um, <laughs> like it's a good joke, but it's not. It's it's I don't know. It's so hard. It's not even an homage. Like it's it's straight up stealing. You uh, know, you're not wrong, but at some point it becomes. Uh... It becomes a free free reign joke for everybody at some point. I mean, uh, I don't know. I still feel something just doesn't, doesn't feel right about them doing that joke. Because I feel like everything else is fine, but I don't know. It's like uh, something doesn't feel right about this. If if that makes sense. No, I get you. Um, but so so he manages to finally get the Cheetos to to uh, Roger and Rico. And Roger kind of says, hey, I'm going to be doing like a plant inspection uh, in about two weeks. How about you pitch me your idea then? Yeah. Uh, and Lonnie is furious and just yelling at him, what, what is wrong with you? Blah, blah, blah. Because his high, it comes down the chain of command yelling at like, uh, yeah. I just remember thinking, I want to punch him in the face. Like, I'm trying to save your job, you son of a bitch. See, here's the thing. And I don't know if you were going to go into this, but like, yes, Lonnie says that. But then he says like, do you know what you realize? You put us on the map, like you put us at the forefront. Now, if he comes in and he says he's just one thing out, out, out of place, we're all done. Like you basically, you put a, uh, what's, what the fuck is it called? The, uh, you put a, uh, one second. Uh, you, you put, put a magnif, you put a magnifying glass, like, like on top of us. And that creates pressure. Because now Lani has to like plan for like a whole tour and be, and be like all that, and yeah, uh, the CEO says that he's gonna come in for a tour, but like he doesn't. He's not gonna come in just to meet with Richard. He's gonna come in to see everything. So if he sees one thing out of line, of course it's a it's a problem because now he's involved everyone in the factory. It was irresponsible, and that's why I think humanizes uh, uh, Lani a bit because he does show that like. Hey, I care about this. I want everyone to still have a job, and like, if we if we make ourselves be seen in a position where we compromise ourselves, it is going to be complicated. It will risk us. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, uh, Richard gets it after. That's why he gets stressed out. It's like I, I don't know how to give a presentation. How the fuck am I going to give a presentation? But then we jump into the same thing. His wife Judy go, goes like, "Okay, we're going to learn them. Fuck it. Like we're like and they that, go that's to the what library, Judy." That's when yeah, you need a Judy and, in your life. Yeah, the lesson of this movie is get a Judy. Like that's that's the biggest takeaway, I guess. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't blame him for rolling the dice. I I do get where you're coming from, but part of me just thinks, look. At one point, Lonnie says, like, either Bakersfield is going to close down or we are. It's going to be one or the other. Yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is we have nothing to lose. Yeah, like that's what I'm hearing is either either I throw the hell Mary or we will die eventually. So throw the ball, um, which I I mean I do I love the fact that he did, and I do also love the fact that like hey kids we didn't have YouTube back then you know what we had to go to the fucking public library grab all the books we could on the subjects and try to find the most relevant information, um. Which is crazy also because this guy, he feels, at least in the film, our protagonist, he feels like a natural salesman. He feels like, what, what, what are the jokes? This guy could sell condoms to a nun. Like, he's a great salesman and it fits. And I I mean, I can imagine he was somewhat nervous because he's kind of punching above his weight class here. But it's yeah. it's nice to see it happen. And it's nice when we get through the awkward part where he's trying to read and make a joke or how many Mexicans are in Australia. And he just yeah. says, look, man, uh, this is our culture. There is a there is a, a Latino market out there that you guys are not hitting. This flavor, this here is our culture in a bag. If you put this out there, you will sell everything. I promise. 
which is yeah. a batshit nuts like like presentation, which I don't know if it would work in real life, but it did here. And I think it helps because didn't Tony Shalou even say that Roger and Rico at one point wasn't he like a server? He's the son of immigrants too. He's the son of Italian immigrants. Yeah. So there's an understanding of hey, neither one of us are from this country. Like you're of my kind, you're of my people. Yeah. Um, so they get the Hail Mary, they create the Hachiros, six fast forward six months, and they're not selling. They're not selling at all because they're not marketing them and they're not uh going at the right uh place. And I like how the movie the movie could have stopped there and be like, we got them out, we won, but no. They actually had to pull another hustle and be, be like, okay, we're going to take all these bags. We're going to give them to our people. And once they like them, they're going to come back for more. And uh, I like how they kind of bring in how the movie started. Like they bring in like the whole family. They bring in like their neighbors. They bring in the old, uh, the old members of the gang. Like all of them are, are a part of this. And it becomes so involved that they cannot ignore it. And they start seeing like the checks come in and the residuals come in, like, oh, it is working. It is uh targeting to a specific demographic. And hell, even people who are not part of the demographic are are buying them. So yeah, they they made like the the what is this, 80s, 90s? 90s, right? 90s. I don't know. Yeah, by this point it's there in the 90s, I think. Yeah. So it's like the '90s version of going viral. Like they just they 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 make they push them to word of mouth. Yeah, it was post Reagan year, so yeah, the '90s. I think it's like '92, '91. Yeah. In the, in the also, South. also they did like the most the, the, the most drug dealer shit, which is like I'll give you the first one for free, and then you have to go buy for the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did, and then they even hustled people at the store and like we want all the bags because this is so good. And a lady walks up, hey, you got another bag or what? Yeah, like what is that? Yeah. Which is which is fucking true. Um, which I'm like, you know what? It is realistic that some asshole would try to like torpedo it, so just so that way, like his product could win. Yeah, um, but sales went up, and they ordered five million more cases. Everything's expanding, um, and that's when we get the most Hollywood scene in this film that's actually real, apparently. Um, Enrico uh hires richard to be the multicultural marketing uh director and yeah. he goes from janitor to executive in one foul swoop i love how throughout the entire movie like throughout the entire play he was like yeah but i'm still the janitor like he like he just <laughs> kept like like he went between like meetings and 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 and, and everything and he just came back to like just be cleaning the floors and like learning a little bit more about the machines. Uh, yeah, it's it is a very Hollywood ending. I don't know how real that was, but God, it it made me, it got me, it got where he walks in and he sees like the name tag and like to, and, and like and, like uh, Enrico tells him like I had to pay extra for that Enya right there. Like it's like <laughs> <laughs> like that. Like it was so wholesome and exactly the kind of ending this movie needs so he like turns he sees everyone at the factory their jobs are saved they're all clapping for him and he like walks into the he walks into the into into a little room into his office he calls his wife on the phone and he's like it's like i'm gonna need a lot of more ties <laughs> like it's and like she's was, she sits oh, on the floor man. crying and it's she's just crying it's so hollywood but it so works man like it's it uh like that that scene that ending made this movie from like a 2.5 out of 10 to like a 3.5 out of 10 like it's a uh, uh there, there there were several like outside uh 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 connections that made this movie better i before watching this i saw the uh the white man can't jump remake and that was a piece of shit so I had to like so this was like the washing uh like the the the, the cleansing the, I don't know this was like the cleansing movie and what a what a good cleansing it was um yeah no it ends well and it ends with the narration and him and his wife going to like dinner and like I love how he takes a moment to like tip literally everyone as he's walking out like like he sees like every immigrant in himself and just like starts tipping them and then he like leaves and like the, we should we see like a little bit of the real person of course and like we see the, the the movie and everything and i like how they specify like uh richard and judy still together 
Like I love when movies sound like that. Like like are these two still together? Like thank you, thank, yeah, thank you. Well yeah. done. It it makes the story feel a little more real. Uh, uh, it makes me believe Richard. And uh, as much as I think that there are some weak elements in the movie, I think the ending knocks it out of the park. It's it's straight up Hollywood cheese. It's straight up biopic cheese. But it's appropriate. It's a movie about a Cheeto, after all. <laughs> you know, man, that ending like got me. It fucking like shot me in the heart, and I loved it. Um, the part where he's cleaning his desk and calls his wife and says, "You know, we're gonna need more ties." It yeah. just like it gets you because I I guess there's so many levels that it's relatable on. Um, on one side, my dad. He's, ah, God, what, what can I disclose? Essentially, he works uh, for a trucking company and he's the service manager, right? Yeah. When he first got the job, he went up to uh, to Danny, who was the manager at the time, way back, way, way, way back. And when he interviewed for the job, he told him, look, I don't know shit about trucks. I don't. Give me a week. And if you think I'm doing a bad job, fire me on the spot. But give me one week. And my dad busted his ass that week to learn everything, every program. He was smart enough to make himself indispensable. You can't get rid of me. Yeah, It's harder for you to get rid of me than to keep me. And Danny, him and Danny worked together for, I think, over 25, 30 years, maybe, till Danny, till Danny had to retire. Um, yeah. But the epitome of just give me a chance and I will make it work. That is the epitome of the American dream, the American story. That happened to my father. My mother, she learned very early on how to work with people, how to create a positive environment, how to to make herself, again, indispensable. She never settled. My parents never settled as being grunt workers. They ran for the top. And I watched it pay off for them, you know, coming from a slum and camargo, coming from the fields in California to owning a, a, I think a decent, well, that's a lie, a big size house, a three, a a good size three story home with a fucking pool with brand new cars, things that they could have never dreamed of working hard to get there. I know there's a, there's an element of like, just work hard and you'll get there, but my parents fucking did it. So to see him accomplish that, that got me in the heart. Like, genuinely, if there was a part where I got misty during the film, it was that. Because you saw someone accomplish what you've seen others accomplish and what you hope to do. And then also in that same realm, as as someone who, you know, married, potential family, you know, coming. It's it's like to see someone who busted his ass, who loves his family, will do whatever it takes. As someone who can say whatever it takes... I worked in a fucking prison because plan A, B, and C failed. So I had to work in a prison for a year to provide for my wife so she could get her master's so that we could progress forward in life. As someone who has seen the shit and to see him succeed, like if that if that doesn't settle with you, I don't know what the hell will. You know? And to know, I hope at least that's true, that he stayed humble, that he remembered where he came from. That that's that's just great. Like that's why the, I love this movie so much. I see my family, I see my experience, I see my culture. Because it, it's also crazy because the valley, I remember one of my classes, we said that the valley's a third world, not in the way of like impoverished, but the valley southern california certain aspects where mexico and the u.s clash it is a third world we're a mesh mash of the of the two we're a mesh mash of america and mexico and through this culture we build it's just i don't know man this movie makes me proud and i can't say that about a lot of other films but this one does you have a pool now we do we have been friends for almost <laughs> 10 years. I've been to your parents, and you never mentioned that you had a p- friendship over. Like, <laughs> friendship over. Yeah. 
Well, you saw it. You came to the wedding. You knew that. I went. Church. I went to your house, but I like. I came in through like the main entrance. I went to your room, and then I dipped. Like I. Do you have a pool? <laughs> yes, and my dad is very proud of it. He maintains it himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> i had nothing serious to add to that so i just had to go for funny like I that's fine i didn't want to crap on your moment but you <laughs> yes and yes. you're and you're oh so that's why that he doesn't bother you okay no what do you mean i see it uh, that's that, that's what when i was like man the heat is horrible you're like yeah whatever like no. Actually, we were in the pool on Sunday, so yeah, that's true. Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> right in my face while I'm weak. Okay, uh, fine, fine. Score this fucking movie. Dude, for me, I, I know, I know, I know, like, the blatant favoritism. This, <laughs> for me, this movie's an A+. I think this film will be in my top ten because it's personal. It's not just yeah. about Hot Cheetos. It's about, to some small degree, my family. Of course, and uh, and I understand completely. You know, I, I I don't I don't I don't drive you for it. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I had no, I didn't know this movie existed uh, two months ago, and after I saw it, I was like, "Yep, yeah, this this was fun." I don't think it's gonna be in my top ten of the year, but I will recommend it. I did enjoy it. Perfect streaming movie, perfect movie to just sit down and like uh, like watch at home. Perfect movie to be to tell your parents like, hey, this movie exists. You should watch it. And like, and and I'm so glad that it's like it was so widely available. I was afraid this was gonna die in like I don't know Redbox or something. But no, it's good that it's on Hulu. It's good that it's on Disney Plus. Uh, I give it a three point five out of five. Uh, I think it's totally uh, workable, accessible, funny. Um, got some good scenes, and it's short. Thank God it's short. Um, <laughs> Because we need more of those. I don't know when the next one that we're going to get that is short like this. Especially because this weekend, getting The Flash. And uh, we don't get we don't get a DC movie every once in a while. I know you're, I, I, I know you're, you're, you're probably very excited for it. I got my tickets already. And we're going to see how it goes. So, uh, not so fun fact. Uh, we only got three more DC films. And then we're taking a break until 2025. There's yep. no there's no DCU films coming out in 2024. The only one that's coming out is Joker 2. So after December, after Aquaman comes out, we got a dry spell for about 15 months. Yeah, but how many miniseries are you, you going to get? When does Waller come out? When does... I don't know. Let me call James Gunn. I have him on my phone. Yeah, don't you have like... <laughs> don't you have, do you sell your DC stock or do you still have it? Uh, I have Warner Brothers stock now. It it, okay. it went from DC to Warner Brothers. Actually, now it might be Warner Brothers Discovery, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, so it's your fault that we have to call it Max instead of HBO Max now. Uh, you no, this. no, it was the dipshit CEO's fault who weren't who wasn't fucking smart enough to I don't know make DC profitable or make HBO Max profitable. Like a bunch of fucking idiots. You know they have Ted Lasso. You know who makes Ted Lasso? Warner Brothers, but they didn't think it was going to be any good, so they licensed it out to uh, Apple. Yeah, you fucking knobs. Yeah. Speaking of Ted Lasso, when are we doing a review of that? Whenever the fuck you guys want to. I've been ready for the past two weeks. Jesus, why you want to do it right now? God no. Okay. I got it. Oh, you want to know what I just met? Well, you don't want to know what I just bought? Oh, I what? Just... Do you have to go to the pool? No, you know what I just bought? I just bought the most dad thing I could have bought. Oh, my God. Can I guess? Give me three yes. guesses. Give me three guesses. You, you got three guesses. Okay. Uh, the most dad thing you ever bought. Uh, oh, uh, you bought like some kind of lotion for your beard. No. Do you want to hit? Am I, in the, am I in the ballpark? Not even close. Jesus, did you buy a knapsack? No, I'll, gi I'll give you a hint. It's an electronic. Did you buy a little clip to put your phone in your belt? No. <laughs> did you buy Did you buy sandals that go with your socks? No. What kind of did jackass wear sandals and socks? A dad. Did you buy a new? Did Did, did you buy uh, trunks for like the for like grilling? No, but you're slightly did, on the right path. Did you buy uh, a thermometer to like insert into like pieces of meat? So Still no, but you're on the right path. Jesus. So it's I'm guessing it's a kitchen utensil. 
It's a like it's kitchen. a thing that you use for cooking. Okay. Uh and it's an electronic. Yes. Did you buy a air fryer? Yes. That's not a dad thing. That's a millennial thing. Is it? Because I'm making chicken nuggets tonight. Yo, like we we recently got one and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chicken nuggets. Everything is true. Everything is true. Like we we we, we did some chicken rolls with like uh with like lemon pepper rub and it oh god it was divine. <laughs> I'll let yeah. you know how it comes out. Yeah, please do. Uh all right. Uh so I guess we're doing flash next. We're doing we'll the flash next in, and we'll squeeze into that lasso whenever the fuck you two are free. Yeah. Uh yeah, I've been so, I mean, dude, I've been so busy. Uh but yeah. All right. Uh okay, so you wanna cue us up? Uh, yeah. So, folks, that was all for today's episode of Flamin' Hot uh, from the rollback. I think I butchered that, but we're going to keep it anyway. Uh, yeah. Do us a favor. Like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. We're always trying to grow our podcast. We actually have shockingly, stupidly high numbers this month. So, everyone that's listening, we appreciate you. Um, go ahead and like us on any social media. We're on everything. We're on Twitter, Instagram. We're on TikTok, Facebook. Chema made us an OnlyFans. We'll see how that goes. Uh, you can see me. You can see me too. And you can see me there. And yeah, thank you for joining us on this actually really personal episode of the rollback. Maybe our most personal. Thank you for joining us. My name was Chema. I've been Eddie. You know what? You know what? What? Just for this episode. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos en este episodio de El Rollback. Mi nombre fue Chema. Yo soy Eduardo. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Espero tengan un excelente resto de semana. Nos vemos la siguiente semana. Let's, vamos a cortarle. I love that. I love that. That was great. That was I pretty good, right? I fucking love that. Oh, yeah. yeah.